morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Unido of Medra MSSO. Among different guidelines, we are starting with Medra, which is M1. Let me briefly introduce myself. From last year, I started working uh, from Medra MSSO. I'm in charge of training in Korea and glossary uh, work um, in Korean language, and I've been also doing document translation work. And I'll begin my presentation with the uh, slide presentation. Medra was developed under the auspices of the International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. MSSO, uh, where I belong, um, are overseen by an ICH Medra Management Committee. So MSSO does the organize the operation and training. It is based upon a contract with ICH. All of the activities of MSSO um, are under supervision of ICH Metra Management Committee, which is composed of the ICH parties, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency of the UK and Health Canada, and the WHO. Disclaimer and copyright notice. Medra uh, is under the copyright protection. So those who are members of the um, organization can share the information, not only for the glossaries, but also for the training materials are protected under copyright. You can make use of the material, but you have to make sure that uh, it is coming from ICH. And when there are, are any amendment or revisions, you also have to notify those changes. Um, today, I've included many um, things in this presentation. I will begin by sharing latest information of MEDRA and MSSO related news. This year, 2020, due to COVID-19 pandemic, unlike regional plans with face-to-face uh, -face, um, training um, schedules, we have switched to online sessions. So we didn't really have a lot of opportunities to carry out sessions. Not only for the training sessions, there were some activities in glossary development. So I'll share those information with you. But before that, it is important to understand what METRA is. So I'll provide overview of METRA. And then I'll go back to the very basic about the background of METRA, the scope, structure, and characteristics. And I'll introduce M1 uh, PTC documentation, which is a guideline. And then I'll show you the Medra browser, how to use it and how to do the coding and do the search. I've included five to six um, exercises. And last but not least, regarding analysis, how uh, you can use Medra. That is a frequently asked questions. So to work with analysis, I will briefly introduce what SMQ is. So this is the table of contents for today's presentation. Let me begin by sharing um, the newest information about METRA. Regarding COVID-19, uh, there were a lot of impact on MSSO. Version 23.0 was um, additionally updated in April. There are um, two updates in March and September every year. But in this April, after the uh, pandemic uh, breakout in March, MSSO was closely following the development of the situation. Regulatory agencies, CRO, and um, um, companies were asking for COVID-19 related coding uh, requirements. So we included those new terms. And there was another update in April, which was very unusual. And in September, addition, additional terms were added 
in 23.1 version. All these latest information can be downloaded through the link on our website. So please make use of the link. And this is a, a screenshot. There is an Excel file. If you open that Excel file, there is a separate sheet listing COVID-19 related uh, terms. 60 uh, for 23.0 and another 60 for 23.1. So uh, it will be very useful uh, source for you. For version 23.1, um, SMQ in relation with COVID-19 is distributed. There were not a lot of training sessions carried out this year, but we tried very hard to meet all these requirements. This is an example. Uh, the excerpt of the addition of COVID-19 in 23.1. Not just for infections, clinical um, study and product related issues are widely reflected. Um, the pandemic related terms, the drug supply related terms are also added. In 2021, the corona vaccine uh, will be introduced and the vaccination will begin. So vaccination related terms will be added. We uh, currently have a project regarding that subject. So far, I talked about updates regarding COVID-19. Next, PTC document. There was a summary and the final version. The final version was provided in English and Japanese only. But this year, we worked really hard, and the Korean final uh, version is released. I'll show you the website. When you go to Madra website, there are multiple tabs. Click how to use and go to support document. You don't uh, need to log in. There are downloadable um, sources. The default setting is English. You can change that to Korean, and you can have you can access to completely translated uh, Word or PDF guidelines. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands how to access to those information. I'll explain about this later. Next, SnowMed City. This is a different glossary. There is a SnowMed and Medra mapping project. SnowMed is for EMR coding in Europe and in USA. So it's a separate glossary system and structure. There was a mapping between SNOMED and METRA. Web Radar 2 is the uh, project name. And under that project, uh, it was included as Work Package 4. IMI from Europe um, sponsored the project. Um, SNOMED and MEDRA participated in developing uh, bilateral mapping. So you can go from SNOMED to uh, Med MEDRA and vice versa. The work is almost done. We are doing alpha test and review feedback analysis. Official distribution will begin in October 2020. And once introduced, there will be continuous update of the contents. So the user of SNOMED will welcome this news, I believe. There are more than 80,000 MEDRA glossaries. Not all of them are done. Only 7,400 frequently used expressions are mapped. So please um, understand that there is a limitation in mapping. And this would be a good news for system developers. We're developing API. I'm not an expert in this field. And I don't really have a complete understanding about this work. But at any rate, API once API is um, completed and open, 
to the developers. Developers will be able to develop their own Medra tools. So it's an open source uh, software model. Data could be uploaded and downloaded without exposing the source. There will be multiple capabilities. For example, a simple search on the browser, structure, SMQ analysis, and embed tools. All these capabilities will be provided through API. It will uh, be open to you in the last quarter um, around December. You can go to how to use, and all of the related information can be accessed. So if you're interested in API information, please go to how to use tab. So far, I talked about latest development. Uh, in, it is important to understand what Medra does. So I'll come back to the very first uh, page. What is the definition of Medra? Some of you uh, may find it new. Medra refers to Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities. There is a word dictionary, and there could be some confusion and misunderstanding. It's not actually a dictionary, because when we think of a dictionary, there is a word followed by definition. Medra does not provide definition. There is only um, a word or expression, and then uh, the structure and hierarchy um, of the words are shown. So statistically speaking, it is closer to data library than the traditional dictionary. So although it um, has dictionary in its title, but it's closer to the terminology. So there is no definition of the uh, term. Medra was developed by ICH. Early 1990s, up until early 1990s, there was no standard international medical terminologies. Due to those differences, there were costs involved. ICH realized the need to come up with standard terminology. As introduced before, expert working group was put together by ICH, and in 1999, Medra version 2.1 was distributed, and there has been update twice a year ever since. Um, ICH has the ownership and copyright of Medra, and MSSO does the operation, but all of the MSSO activities are supervised by Medra Management Committee. So when we have internal meetings, Management Committee is our real boss. So that's the relationship. As explained in the first session, in relation with METRA, ICH regulatory agencies have introduced uh, METRA information. EU, US, and Japan are founding members. So when METRA was first introduced in 1999, these uh, three um, countries have been using them. So it's been already 20 years, especially in case of Europe. It is clearly stipulated in GVP. Medra Control F is the key that you can use. Because it's stipulated in GVP, it is um, almost legalized there. SMPC. for certain parts uh, are requiring the use of METRA terminology. FDA of USA has been um, leading the introduction of METRA. Unlike Europe, in case of USA, uh, it's difficult to find METRA from guideline or laws. 
because USA has fares, fares, and cares, different databases. They are managed with Medra, but there is no legal requirement or binding requirement to absolutely have Medra. So Medra is not part of the legal system in, in America, but it's a de facto standard in USA. So Medra is widely used in America. And in Japan, there is a requirement uh, of using Medra. So in these three countries and region, it's been um, quite some time since Medra was introduced. And um, it's um, stabilized. But unfortunately, countries with red colors in their national flag, um, Canada and Switzerland, they are uh, registered as a uh, standing regulatory members. They are currently using Medra in these two countries. But these two countries, just like Korea, uh, used Hoart before. But after joining ICH, they switched to Medra. So they have a similar experience. We are in the transitional period, so maybe the cases from Canada and Switzerland could uh, provide us lessons. I understand in these two countries, the transition is finished. Next, China. People are curious about the progress um, in China. China joined the ICH uh, at the same um, time as us. Uh, E2B R3 is introduced already. Uh, that means Medra is being used. But as for the mandatory use, it's different. So I'll um, have to do the research again. But at any rate, China started using Medra. And the number of Chinese users are increasing. Korean Medra was first distributed in September last year. There is a Korean language support from the website. You can see that um, by yourself. The latest version is 23.1 version. You can download this version in Korean. And MFD has created new RE reporting system, um, which is uh, under beta open, Medra is already applied to this information. Medra is protected by copyright. It's um, a national system. You have to register and you have to provide Medra ID uh, for registration. So it was a background and overview. MEDRA is a clinically validated international medical terminology used by regulatory authorities and uh, regulatory um, regulated by a pharmaceutical industry. The terminology is used through the entire regulatory process from pre-marketing to post-marketing and for data entry. It's not used for pre-clinical. From phase one, uh, until phase four, um, post uh, marketing is the scope. Different databases and reports are listed here. And ICSR is, um, was the strongest motivation to introduce MEDRA for clinical tests and studies. And for core company safety information, Medra is used. For in certain countries, uh, marketing applications and prescription information uses Medra of, for publications as well. And in case of USA, for marketing and advertising, Medra terminologies are uh, required to be used. The most well-known user um, is ICHR. This is ICH E2B, which will be discussed tomorrow. Uh, Medra must be used in ICH E2B.
this uh, there are a lot of items in E2BR3 and 12 um, of them are using Medra. The indication, reverse uh, reactions, and so on. So when you report reverse uh, events, in Korea, we have a different system for now. But MFDS recently announced that uh, from June 2020, uh, it will be changed. So the usage of Medra will become mandatory. So if you're working for a relevant agencies and med if Medra is not introduced to your organization, please uh, get ready. So starting from June 1st, 2021, Medra uh, will become mandatory. There are a lot of glossaries and terminologies within Medra, and this slide shows the scope of Medra. So things included in the blue circle is uh, what belongs to Medra. I'll try to go as quick as possible. Medical conditions, not only the diseases, um, Indications and symptoms are all included. So indications can be coded using Medra. Investigations, tests, simple uh, blood pressure test, up to COVID um, test and screening are all included. The result may uh, make you confused. This, the results of the test, the qualitative ones, uh, pass, fail, uh, could be shown here, but numeric results cannot be coded using Medra. And the medical and surgical procedures, Artificial heart transplant and other um, procedures are included. Medical, social, family history all included. Medication errors, which is a tricky part. This is the latest um, topic, um, latest challenge of uh, Medra coding. For example, the formulation errors or the injectables using wrong APIs, those uh, codes are included. Product quality issues. Recently, there was an uh, issue about vaccine quality in Korea, uh, and those are included. Device-related issues, product use issues. Product use and product quality, they are different. For product use, off-label use is part of uh, product use issues. And pharmacogenetic terms, toxicologic issues, and standardized queries. The standardized query will be explained in the latter part of the uh, presentation. SMQ is um, within the scope of Medra. Many people ask questions about the difference between Medra and food drug. So when they want to search for the uh, drug um, name, because uh, this is not a, a product dictionary, uh, they cannot find the information. From Medra, it's a medical um, terminology information. Next, uh, so it's not a drug dictionary. Next, patient demographic terms. Uh, for example, you know, elderly or pregnant women and children. These are included in general aspects, but for clinically specific cases, those terminologies can be searched separately. For example, 
if uh, there are more specified terms depending on the age uh, between adult and newborn, and if those uh, clinical symptoms are, or results are different, then the terms are separated. The clinical trial study design terms are not included, uh, frequency qualifiers not included, numerical values not included, severity um, descriptors not included. Unless the disease name has a severe, there is no criteria indicating severity of the disease. So I talked about the scope. Next, the hierarchical structure, five different layers. The very first layer, the top layer, is system organ class. It's called SOC, 27 SOCs. And then different groups, more than 300 HLGT and 1,700 HLT. Preferred term is important. It's important because from PT, analysis and statistical um, work is work begin. PT, once uh, there is a consensus about medical concept that is added in PT. So PT is the basis for the uh, statistical analysis. When you do the coding and making a selection, you uh, use LLT, the lowest level term. More than 20,000 PT and more than 80,000 LLT. There's an exponential um, increase because the synonyms and synonyms are included. For example, UK expression and American expression. Sometimes there are differences in uh, spellings. So all these differences are uh, reflected in LLT. That is why the number of LLT is uh, large. So differences in nuance and um, wordings uh, are st stipulated here. SOC is at the top level, HLGT and HLT are four groups. At PT level, analysis and statistical work is done, and for coding, LLT is used. 27 socks. It's difficult to um, understand in English, so I uh, came up with um, Korean. List of 27 socks. This uh, could be compared to the name of the chapters in autopsy uh, textbook. There are three types of SOC. First is um, autopsy and the body structure uh, related. Cardiac disorders, um, mus muscular, skeletal, and connective tissue disorders. And then the second type is related to the cause of the disease. Congenital, familiar, and genetic disorders. And the list of cancers. And last but not least, I talked about the scope of METRA. Pregnancy uh, and social environment related SOCs. As for the social environment, it's not about disease names. It's more about personal um, aspect of patients, which is very interesting. For example, smokers, wheelchair users. So it's not a disease but it indicates any potential impact on the overall health of the patients. So in total, 27 socks. So let's take an example of uh, one hierarchy. 
once uh, you go to um, cardiac disorders at SOC level, you go down to cardiac arrhythmias, and then there are different types. Rate and rhythm disorders, NEC, is selected HLT at the HLT level, and then PT is arrhythmia. So this is the flow of the selection. PT, uh, there's a, a singular uh, terms, but above that level, there are S's uh, to indicate plural. This is the structure of um, English, and there is Korean in blue. When Omedra was uh, translated in Korean, we had a lot of discussion about singular and plural. Should we go for um, 장애 들 instead of 장애? But uh, that sounds awkward in Korean. So we uh, decided to not making distinction between singular and plurals. But then uh, there could be issues in the medra hierarchy because these are not unique names in a translated version. So the answer we found is to add multiple or various in, uh, in the beginning of the term. So you will see this various or multiple in the Korean translation. So you don't really need to worry too much. If you see this various or multiple, uh, you just understand um, that it indicates plural forms. And there are abbreviations, NEC, not elsewhere classified. NEC is often used here. NOS uh, is for not otherwise specified. LLT. You can always find exact the same um, as PT. And arrhythmia and arrhythmia. Uh, there is dysrhythmia. Uh, they are synonyms. So when you go through LLT, you will have a better understanding of PT. Like I mentioned before, there is no definition. So if you're not a subject matter expert, uh, you'll have to go through a Google search uh, at PT level. But when you go through LLT, you could have a better understanding of PT. Non-current uh, was um, indicated in the slide. Non-current are the terminologies with flags. The flagging is done at LAT and recommended not to use uh, those terminologies for coding anymore because new terminologies are added. Once added, there is no deletion. The reason is um, there is a old version uh, with that terminology. Once it becomes non-current, uh, they will not be used uh, in the future. But it's to provide backward compatibility to make sure that previous analysis can be still retrieved. There are different reasons why uh, the terminology becomes non-current. Sometimes the uh, meaning is not uh, clear um, or the ambiguous. Uh, the terms are outdated, truncated, or spelled. Sometimes terms derived from other terminologies that do not fit MEDRA rules will be uh, come non-current. MEDRA came from existing terminologies from different countries um, in early 1990s. And then gradually the uh, structure was uh, developed. So some of the terminologies came from different structure. Although they are included, uh, they do not meet the criteria anymore. So those are switched to non-current. So you'll be able to see many non-current uh, terms. Next uh, is a slide talking about the relationship between code and um, languages. 14 different language uh, support is done. And last year, Korean was added. And more recently, 
the Brazilian Portuguese has been added. So if you look at the code, electronically, the Madra uh, terminologies can be transferred. So the disease names, for each disease names, the numerical code is assigned. For example, for headache, you can see 14 language translation for that. However, the numerical code for that headache is identical. So when we use electronical form or select a term, at the back end of the computer system, the selection of the terminology is done, and then the information is transferred through the online, and that is the numerical information. And we, as human beings, can see and read this different language version of the disease name. So we can read the term as language, but the transmission is done in the numerical code form. And in the process of translation, uh, some issues arise. For example, arrhythmia and dysarrhythmia should be translated into the same Korean language. So there are some duplicated translations. So you can see that issue on this slide. For English terminology or the English version, there is no uh, duplication or overlapping. However, there are the identical LATs for Korean translation. As you can see on this slide, you can see bleeding nose, epistasis. There can be different types of the epistasis, bleeding nose, nose bleeding, you can have the space between these two words or uh, without the space. But for Korean language, they are all the same. So you can be a bit confused about this. But this is not only the Korean uh, issue. It is also for other languages, too. So this issue occurs for the translation. However, it happens only for the LLT under the same PT. And when you do the coding, coding of these different LLT, you can choose one, but that will not create any problems because the analysis will be done at the PT level. So which LLT you choose does not create an issue. But if you go into the deep level, then some people uh, still ask a question about what, you, what they can do. What you can do is that if there is a LLT which is identical with the English version of the PT, then you just choose it. But this here, in this case, you don't have that kind of the LLT. So all of the LLT presented on this slide, if you have to make a choice, then I said there are numerical code. So it's better for you to choose the lower uh, number of the numerical code. So these are the two things that we can do when we have the translation related issues for PT and LLT. So another thing that I want to say is that there are two times of the update in a year for MADRA. And there are some update that we do, but at the same time, the users request to update and add certain terms. So we do have the user responsive terminology. It seems to be quite decent because it shows the engagement, active engagement of the users. So there is a process of requesting the adding of the terminologies. But at the same time, if there is an issue with the Korean translation, then you can uh, submit this change request. As you can see from this table, when we announced or released the 23.1 version, there were some changes of the translation in Korean because of the request. 
So the Korean translation has been more sophisticated, more uh, precise. This can be only done by the users of Korean language. So when you use the Korean version of the Madra, if you find anything that you want to and you believe that should be changed, then you can let me know through the email. I always try to review the terminologies. However, you know the terminology itself is quite huge in terms of the number because they are already 80,000. So if I share the recent change request, sore throat was requested for change. Sore throat is about pain. It was translated as the, the sore inflammation in Korean. So the re request for change was to change it to pain, not inflammation. So that was uh, approved. So next year, March, the new version will have that change reflected. So these kind of a change requests are quite welcomed. So next is the hierarchy or the structure. There are five elements in the hierarchy, but at the same time, there is one additional uh, element in hierarchy, which is the multi-axial uh, structure, which means that uh, multiple SOT can be connected to the, uh, the PT. So the PT is the medical concept. So from the PT, the multi-axial structure starts. By having this structure, it is possible to classify the data in many different ways, and MADRA can be more flexible. But the problem is that the data experts would say that when we calculate or the make some uh, make a sum of a certain data, there can be some duplication. So there is a way out of it. Let's say the PT can be connected to many, but there are the primary SOC. So the this primary SOC will be used. For example, when we create a table, as we can see in the literature, then the primary SOC will be the uh, basis for classification. And let's say there are five SOCs connected to one uh, PT, then the, there is one primary SOC, and remaining four are a secondary SOC. So this is the example. There is an influenza, the term, And um, there are some SOCs related to the respiratory and also at the same time to the infections and infestation. And if you go through the hierarchy, that you can see there are respiratory tract infection and viral infectious disorders and others. So you have two SOCs for one PT. So this is how the multi-axial structure is represented. And there are the primary SOC. Of course, there is a rule to assign the primary SOC. What is most important here is that there should be one primary SOC. And at the same time, the PTs for diseases, signs, and symptoms are assigned to prime manifested manifestation site SOC. But there can be some exceptions. For example, as you can see from law, there is always a exception. So we have three exceptions here. For example, the, for the congenital and hereditary anomaly terms, they are uh, allocated or assigned to the primary SOC of congenital, familiar, and genetic SOC. And that is also true for neoplasm benign, malignant, and unspecified, and also the infections and infestations. And 
from the previous slide, uh, the example was connected to the infections and infestations as the primary associate, and that's because of this exception here. But there can be many uh, overlapping diseases, meaning that it, uh, a certain disease can be congenital and at the same time infection related. And if that is the case, there are there should be a priority, as you can see on this slide. The first is the congenital uh, and genetic disorder, and the second is the neoplasm related, and third is the infectious and infestations. And there are also the uh, PTs only appear in the particular SOC, which include investigations and surgical and medical procedures and social circumstances. They are not included into the multi-axial structure. And it can be a very uh, simple quiz. For congenital HIV infection as PT, so this is the congenital and it's HIV involved and infection. So it can be linked to four different SOCs. So if you think about the primary SOC assignment rule, which should be primary SOC for this PT? Think about that. So the answer is the congenital, familiar, and genetic disorders. Because this SOC has the priority over other exceptions. This is why this SOC is the primary SOC for PT. Other than this congenital and genetic disorders, all the other SOCs are secondary. So I just go through the uh, basic structure or the hierarchy of the MADRA. So from now on, I'd like to talk about the guideline-related issues. Um, the MADRA, you know a lot how it should be used. But at the same time, MADRA is the M1 ICH guideline. If you look at the ICH website, you can find PTC or point to consider documentation for the MADRA. PTC is, uh, is about the guideline to use MADRA, which is provided by ICH, which means MADRA itself is the standard. But at the same time, how to use it is made into guideline, and that is provided by ICH, which means how to use MADRA is already determined, and we have to uh, comply with that. So this is about the SOP. The companies always make SOP to standardize the operation. The same is true for the MADRA use. So it's not just about the coding, how to manage and uh, the versioning and how to manage the such recent versions. All these things are made into SOP and that is recommended to be made into SOP. And in when you do that, you can utilize PTC, particularly for coding. It's really good to have the written rules. We call it as the coding convention. So when we say coding convention, it means that how we can use MADRA. When you start to use MADRA, you believe that it's quite difficult and quite complicated because it's quite a huge dictionary. But the structure or the hierarchy is very logical and there is a supporting document on how to use it. So once you are familiar with that, then it's quite easy to use. So when you conduct the MADRA coding, the consistency is important. So the coding convention should be applied well. And PTC can be used in this activity. The picture is a bit outdated. And this is the picture of the PTC working group for M1. And you can see t 
two officers from MFDS. So when the PTC is to be updated, the Korean MFDS is actively participating in it. And for PTC, there are three types. The terminology selection. So PTC for terminology selection is one term selection. There is a full version and summary version. There are two versions provided. In the past, there were only English and Japanese versions, but from now, we have Korean version too. So the Korean full version is distributed from the version 23, September this year, and Chinese and Spanish the Chinese already provided, and the, uh, the Spanish will sh will soon be distributed as a full version. And um, other languages, some of the other languages, will be provided in the summary version. So for the term selection is one type of the PTC. The other type would be uh, the data search, data retrieval and presentation. Uh, when we have the term from the MADRA, how they can be presented and the options to presentation, options for the presentation are provided here. So likewise here, the summary and free version are provided. And there are a companion document. In 2018, the first companion document was uh, talked about in the MADRA context. The important document or the important uh, supportive document or the information are provided with this. So the questions and answers. Medication errors are already covered at the first edition. And the product quality section will be provided, but there will be, there will not the uh, Korean version on this so far. So far, the English and Japanese versions are provided. So this is the PTC for the coding. This is the cover page. Of that, the ICH endorsed the guide for MADRA users, so it is endorsed by the ICH. So this means that we have to use MADRA in accordance with this guide. So it contains the recommendations for industry and regulatory purpose. Although it is says it's a guideline, it contains a lot of information and it is very detailed and it contains many uh, examples so you can utilize this and make it as a base for your SOP so it's recommended to be used as basis for the individual organization's own coding conventions so you can download this file in a word format. So this is developed by the ICH working group under the management committee. This is updated annually. PTC in the past were updated twice along with the MADRA update, but from this year, it was decided to update one time a year. So you can download it from the MADRA and JMO website. You can download it into Word version. And the Word version is good because you can see the red-lined version so that you can identify the differences from the previous version and the current version. For PTC, P 
before we start the coding, we have to uh, check the source data quality. So actually, the quality of those data decides the quality of the output. So clarification of data need to be uh, obtained. And the form, the data collection form should be well designed. And the training of the relevant staff should be well done. And the organization's coding guidelines should be consistent with the PTC. And after coding is done, there should be some process for the quality assurance so that the experts can do some reviewing work. There are many coding conventions, but I want to share just one, LLT. Always the LLT should be used in coding, and it should be current terms, not non-current terms. So this is an example. For example, a beast on face. Then when you code it, rather than just to choose a beast, if you have the uh, facial abscess, then you have to choose it. By having that coding, you can have higher specificity. There are some more examples. If you deal with a lot of safety data, you have seen this terms quite a lot. There can be many different ways to describe headache, like throbbing above temple, or aching all over head, or pursing pain in head, and really bad headache. So there can be many different and detailed description. But when you code it into Madra, it should be headache. And second example is quite easy, infection in lung. It should be quoted as lung infection. The third example can feel a bit dif difficult. Patient take drug A instead of uh, drug B and then experience hypertension. So that is reported. So hypertension is an important information, so the hypertension should be coded as hypertension. But there is a medication or error, so it should be coded as wrong drug administered. So that should be selected from the MADRA term, and that's what coding work does. So if you look at the PTC, there are so many different uh, items like diagnosis and provisional diagnosis with or without signs and symptoms, death and other patient outcomes. So there are very detailed guidelines in PTC. It's not easy to read all the details in the uh, lengthy document. However, it's quite of your value to at least take a look at it so that later on when you have some necessity, you can refer to this document. So that's about the PTC for data coding. And here, this is a retrieval and the presentation. So the PTC for data retrieval and presentation. Once again, here, the source data quality is important. And at the same time, the term need to be well and consistently selected. Only then consistent analysis and quality analysis can be produced. Some old data were coded in different rule, but they should be converted into the MADRA. And that process may impact the retrieval and presentation quality. For Korea, we used the HUAT. And the data from HUAT were converted into the MADRA. So that's, that can be one example for this. Here you see uh, gastrointestinal ischemia. Uh, gastrointestinal disorder is the uh, what or previous term. The, it is reported as the gastrointestinal ischemia, but in who what, there is no such a team. So that was coded as the gastrointestinal disorder. And when it is converted to the MADRA, you can for you can do 
what you can do is you just to disregard gastrointestinal ischemia as reported term. You just look at the uh, what term and then convert it into the madra. But there is a, an issue. That's because that that means in the reported term there are more detailed information, but you just converted from the who what terminology, and therefore such a detailed information is still lost. And you can use the bridge file, so you can do the conversion quite easily. So that's an advantage. So if you have to convert the who what uh, to the madra, then you can utilize bridge files. So if you want it, you can contact me. We have used the point ninety one version of the who what, but if you contact UMC, they have one point fifty one version. So for the Korean users, actually, I have the uh, specific bridge file that you can utilize in that conversion. That's the one way. The second way is better way, actually. You can look at the reported term, which is the gastrointestinal ischemia. And then you convert it into the madra term, where you can have some information about ischemia. It's better, however, it takes a lot of time and resources. So if you have a large database, it may not be that much feasible for you to do it. So depending on the uh, which way you used, you have to think about what we you go for the, the database as a whole. And the do not alter convention. Madra has the predefined term hierarchy, and therefore it should be used as it is. But if you look at the, the primary SOC, sometimes you feel that you want to alter some of them. I cannot think of a specific example top of my head now. But let's say you are you know quite a lot about a specific patient conditions or signs, and that were reported. However, you uh, believe that this primary SOC is not that much clear because it's more about the respiratory. But you believe it should be more immune related one. But you cannot alter it because based on the convention and rules. This structure is already predefined, so you cannot alter it. And because of this do not alter convention, it is a standardized terminology. But there can be some examples where you believe that this is really wrong, then you can make a change request officially so that we can adjust the hierarchy. But when you use it, you cannot make any alteration to it. Before we go into the coding section, let's take a look at Medra browser. When you go to Medra website, um, uh, top on the right, WBB um, is there and by clicking it you go to Metra browser. Metra ID and password um, entered and this is Metra browser. You can um, tell that this is uh, a screen for search so it's easy to figure out how to use it. You can change the language, interface language, to Korean. Um, most of you are familiar with both English and Korean. You see the list of 27 socks. Um, English and Korean can be selected. 
and you can see both. This is how I use Medra. You could click open each hierarchy. For example, let's um, select gastro uh, disorders. Then there will be a list of different um, gastrointestinal disorders. And let's click gastric ulcer. And when you click plus sign, you could go down um, to the different uh, lower level. And different colors are shown here. Blue is for multi excel and first level, and this is from the gastrointestinal, so that's the initial position. But this is multi excel, so it could be a linked to other SOCs. So when we click this blue to the bottom on the right uh, gastrointestinal and injury SOC these are two SOCs but um, gastrointestinal is the primary SOC so blue uh, indicates this multi exo and red is for um, ursal this is monoaxial so for ursal this does not come up in different SOC, only in a gastrointestinal SOC. Green uh, is helicobacter ulcer. So this is a multi axial secondary level. So as you can imagine, this is related to infection and ulcer. So infection SOC is the primary SOC. We started from gastrointestinal. So this is the secondary. Um, and for the primary, there is a different position. So, so for helicobacter ulcer, there is a secondary as gastrointestinal. So these are examples. And one layer lower, LLT, different types of ulcer and multiple LLTs. Red. is non-current. So non-current terminologies are marked with red. GU, it's non-current because it's ambiguous. There is a possibility of misinterpretation other than gastrointestinal ulcer. So that was the explanation of our cases and Medra concept tab. If you open that tab, there are explanation of certain concepts and words. This is not a definition per se. This is an information to help you understand uh, Medra better. So some of the concepts are explained here. Uh, the explanation is from Medra's perspective. For example, abuse and misuse. When there are confusion during coding, if you need additional information, please go to this concept um, explanation tab and look for relevant information. Not all of 80,000 terms are explained. Uh, there is, this is a list of selective concepts. User guide for the browser is provided in English. For any particular section, 
If there are any functionalities that you're struggling with, uh, please look for that uh, corresponding section. Let's do the search. It's in English. Let's look for cardiac failure. There is 100% um, matching LLT, and the results that include cardiac failure, 20. And there is a synonym search result. When you click open it, we put the keyword cardiac failure. Heart failure um, comes up in the research, uh, in the search results. For synonyms, you can click it and it shows the group of synonyms. Cardiac is equivalent to heart. So the results for heart failure is also shown. So there are different synonym groups. When switching to Korean, um, the same function is provided. Chest, breast, bruise, eye, eyeballs. So this is supported. There are other features, but among them, I would like to emphasize this. So when we find heart failure or cardiac failure, uh, you can um, see the hierarchy by clicking um, the different layer. This is from top to the bottom, to your left. When you right-click your mouse and click Move to Browser, selected LRT's location is shown um, on the panel on the left. To understand PT, please uh, pay attention to LLT. If you want to check relevant terminologies, uh, please make use of the right-click features uh, to move to browser. We're running out of time, so I'll have to get back to the slide. This is a web-based browser, no additional installation required. When you are offline, you could uh, install desktop browser, and you can also use mobile browser. Um, please use this um, URL. I already talked about features and characteristics. There are new uh, features, but which is not the scope for today's presentation, so I'll skip this part. Now, we saw how to use browser. And there are exercises. I think uh, we can work on two. Um, for today. First, with safety uh, reporting information, before coding, we have to find the LLT, but we have to think about this first. The information I, I see is this about indication or clinical condition, test result, inj or injury? There are different types of safety information being reported. So we need to understand what I am looking at, what re this really is. Depending on the type, uh, the method to find LRT can vary. Where Which SOC should we begin and which um, terminology we should go for? to reduce the time required.
So let's move on to the exercise. Exercise one. The blue part is where we need to pay attention. The patient suffered from an allergic reaction to an antibiotic. And there is an underline um, to be coded. Specificity of the underlined uh, phrase must be considered in coming up with the right LLT. So we open the browser. You could use both English and Korean. So let's try um, English this time. What is the keyword? Allergic reaction for me um, pops up. So allergic reaction. Uh, there is allergic reaction LLT. And I check hierarchy, hypersensitive, immune, um, React immune system disorders. And there was another imp important information, allergic reaction to an antibiotic. So I go for more specific uh, results. Uh, Painkillers and um, additives. And there is allergic reaction. So the answer is allergic reaction to antibiotics. To make a comparison, open upper higher um, level. Hypersensitivity was PT, but the allergic reaction to antibiotics, drug hypersensitivity is the PT. So more specificity is reflected. So that is uh, the goal of this exercise, coming up with a correct answer with specificity. Due to time limit, we'll have to skip a few exercises. Moving on to exercise four. Let's try um, this time in Korean. Medication errors. The coding for medication errors could be challenge. Patient accidentally, uh, similar to previous exercise, patient accidentally took drug Y instead of drug X and became short of breath. The underlined part is took drug Y instead of drug X, medication errors, and short of breath. So two um, important information ba uh, you can be used for basis of coding. Short of breath. So let's do search for short of breath. The exactly same wordy, worded LLT is found. So this is the answer. Dysmia, dysnia, a more medical term, is PT. So short of breath is the right answer. What about medication errors? I think you can remember this. Wrong drug un administered. If you are aware of this, you could have a direct search with this keyword. But if taking drug Y instead of drug X is the only information, uh, it will be difficult to do the search. So for medication errors, instead of search, top-down approach could be more suitable. What you need to remember in that uh, case is in under injury SOC, medication errors 
are shown. So you can start from medication errors and go one by one. Medication errors, uh, confusion, um, error, con uh, errors due to confusion and exposure and so on. We need to find administration error. So we open this HLT. It takes a while because it's in alf alphabetical order. So you have to go through all the lists and scroll down. In wrong product administered, it's found at PT. And among them, if you are confident, you could find the right LLT below. Wrong drug. This is drug, product, and vaccine. The reporting uh, used drug, the term. So the answer at LLT level is wrong drug administered. short of breath and wrong drug administered or selected. Exercise 13. Not only AE indications, medical history, um, surgery history can be coded using MEDRA. And anything that could be coded using MEDRA must be coded. There could be coding errors. One thing to note is soft coding. This is uh, about selecting a term which is both less specific and less severe than another MEDRA uh, term in both the intentional and non-intentional case. Uh, liver failure, for example. Liver failure must be coded, but instead of using liver failure, hepatotoxicity or increased LFT uh, could be used, and those are not recommended. And there is a missing of information. All of the administered medical information must be coded. You must not have selective uh, approach. So that was a brief explanation about coding. And last um, topic is SMQ. SMQ stands for standardized MEDRA queries. But there was a um, difference in the second word during translation. I think this is a more accurate um, translation because it helps you understand what SMQ is really about. Groupings of terms from one or more MEDRA SOCs related to medical condition or area of interest. This is the definition of SMQs. There are lots of terminologies on the MEDRA with very specific um, meanings. So when you do the analysis, um, you do not work on a single PT. You do the analysis uh, based upon wide LLT information. But there are cases, specific cases that you want to check. Then you could use query. And for that purpose, SMQ is created and uh, provided. Query is used for 
wide areas. For example, query is sent to a different department or division within the organization uh, with questions. The definition of query is computer language and computer command asking for uh, information. But here, um, it, this could be understood as um, request form for LLTs. All of the relevant cases can be found using SMQ, and query is used for that purpose. Let's look at the examples. 106 SMQs uh, for 23.0, 108 for 23.1. Ag Agronulocytosis, anaphylactic reaction, so drug uh, reverse reactions are all developed in Version 23.1, COVID-19 SMQs are distributed and self-immune um, system disorder is added. So in total, currently 106 SMQs are provided. SMQ data characteristics. It's developed at uh, Medra PT. Below PT, there are LLTs. So LLTs are also included in SMQ. But during the development or for the development, uh, it's done PT level. And I will take an example of broad and narrow SMQ. When you open um, SMQ, two different scope, narrow and broad. For narrow, specificity. For broad, sensitivity. So all the potential cases can be shown in a broad search. One thing to note is that depending on the goal of the search, you uh, choose between narrow and broad. For broad, not only broad terms, both broad and narrow terms must be used. So that's one thing you have to remember. Let's take an example of lactic acidosis. You can see the list of narrow and broad terms. For lactic acidosis, we our body uh, cre creates energy, and during that process, lactic acidosis um, can happen, which is due to a uh, broken balance. So, if you look at the narrow terms, lactic acidosis, hyperlactic Acidemia, blood lactic acid increase. These are medical and diagnostic terms under narrow terms. But for broad terms, they're more general. For example, blood pH decreased. And um, the treatment-related terms are also included as alkali uh, treatment. So all of uh, potential cases are shown under broad by using both narrow and broad. If you are sure or if you are certain about checking the results under um, lactic acidosis, then you could just use narrow terms. 
Corona COVID-19 SMQs are added. It also has narrow and broad terms. It was distributed September 2020. When SMQs are created at MSSO, before distribution, there is a multiple testing period for COVID-19 SMQ. We didn't have enough time. So testing is not done for this specific part during the operation and maintenance there could be changes because we skipped testing part for COVID-19 this is my final slide if I remember correctly SMQ could be applied in different areas mostly for uh, post marketing safety database selected SMQs to retrieve cases for suspected or known safety issues and signal detect for signal detection, especially um, EMA uh, uses this for single case alerts and periodic safety reporting. SMQ could be used. So there are a lot of applications in the post marketing field. Uh, it is also used for clinical trials uh, where safety profile is not fully established. Uh, for example, then use multiple SMQs on routine basis as a screening tool. Selected SMQs can be used to evaluate previously identified issues such as preclinical data or class effect. So far, we talked about the latest information about MEDRA MSSL, the background and the scope and structure of MEDRA. And we had the browser demo and coding exercise. And I briefly introduced the concept of SMQ for you. With this, I'd like to conclude my presentation. The MSSL contact information in my email address um, is shown here.